So learning about the water in front of your boat real time. That is 3D forward looking sonar. Correct. Uh, you know, I know this is a podcast, but I have a couple of uh, cool pictures that might be of interest to those of your audience that are uh, following along online. I'll try to describe these so even the audio listeners can still kind of see uh, or hear what's going on. But basically, our sonars make a 3D image in front of the vessel. Uh, everything inside the field of view, which is like a pie wedge emanating from the front of the vessel, is real time. But we're also building a map of the depths of everywhere we've been. So, uh, you know, if you're going back to a place, not only will you have the real time ideas of what you see uh, from the forward looking sensor, but you'll also have that local history map of when you were last there. And our systems are designed to see the types of things that boaters really care about hitting. So things like coral reefs, uh, ice, if you're going up into the polar regions, of course, large whales, uh, rocky pinnacles, uh, shipping containers that fall overboard during the, the shipping process, and all sorts of other unknown obstacles. You know, like think about the old pier that may have broken down at the waterline. Those are all great sonar targets. Uh, and all that information gets displayed on our software, which has a really cool 3D view of both what's in front and that history map. But we also have a chart overlay, which shows you, you know, your standard electronic charts with the sonar overlaid on top. So you can really easily correlate what you see in the sonar and what you see on the chart. And if they match, well, then you can have high confidence in that area. If they don't match, then maybe you want to downgrade your confidence on the charts. Maybe you want to slow down, uh, you know, use your other sensors like your eyes, uh, radar, whatever you would do to help navigate uh, more safely. And the software has other cool things like AIS overlays. Uh, it has basic conning display. And we even have uh, user-defined alarms so that when something enters the alarm volume, the screen would flash, and if you have audio connected, it goes ding, 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 and uh, hopefully you would actually do something about it. But of course, you know, we're not driving the boat, so we can't guarantee that the operator will actually do something based on what we're telling them, but at least we can tell them there is something ahead and something that they might care about seeing. Wow. So how is this different than what voters may have now? Uh, you know, that's a great question. Uh, probably almost all of your listeners have a sonar on board, uh, and that would be in the form of an echo sounder, which uh, looks straight down. And so the echo sounder tells you what you just drove over uh, and, you know, how deep the water is uh, that you just saw that you, you, you passed by. But uh, it doesn't tell you a whole lot about what's in front of the vessel, it only tells you what's underneath. So uh, again, I have some pictures that I'll try to describe for your audio listeners, but basically your echo sounder puts all of its energy down and almost all of that energy comes back up to you. But as you kind of push that energy forward to look ahead of the vessel, uh, at a steep angle, a lot of that energy comes back to you, but a little bit starts to bounce forward until at some point you get more and more energy reflecting off the sea floor, but it's reflecting forward. So you can think of this very similar to shining a flashlight on a mirror. If you're lined up perfectly with that mirror, it's gonna reflect back to you. But if you're off on an angle and you're shining the flashlight at an angle to the mirror, the mirror is going to reflect really well, just not back to you. And the seafloor does that same type of thing with sonar energy. So with your echo sounder pointing down, it's gonna reflect back to you. With a forward looking sonar, at some point, it's going to reflect uh, back to you, but also eventually reflect forward. And it turns out that this point is about eight times the depth below the sonar. Uh, and beyond that, you're still putting out energy, but it's reflecting back to you unless you have something in the water that you care about, like a bunch of rocks or coral 
or bridge pilings or shipping container, the things you care about hitting, those now have edges that can reflect that energy back to you. Uh, and so all of your listeners probably have a simple echo sounder pointing straight down, but it's not gonna tell you about that rock in front of you. So the forward looking sonar actually lets you see what's coming up ahead. Uh, you know, I talked a little bit about what our products do and why there's a value. Uh, and one of the things that we're uh, doing besides the real-time capabilities is building the map that I mentioned. And this is obviously great for when you're returning to a location where you've been before. Or if you're going to anchor somewhere that's not an official anchorage, you can do a quick anchor survey and then drop the hook in the middle so that when you're swaying with the tides and the currents and the wind, you can see where your stern is relative to any of those shallow areas that you may have uh, mapped in that survey. And what's really exciting is we're working with some of our customers to actually get this off of their boats and get it into the global community for Seabed 2030. Uh, like I mentioned before, the Argos 350 is our newest model, uh, and it's also our uh, smallest model, so it makes it easier to install on smaller vessels. Uh, here's a, a picture I'm displaying that shows all three of our sensor models, yeah. but basically it's a small transducer module that we uh, install onto the hull, and uh, the only real difference between our models are the maximum ranges. Otherwise, the software is the same and the inboard equipment uh, is the same. To install the Argos 350 or any of our other models, it's the same general process. Basically, a fairing is integrated to the hull, which is essentially a tube, and then the transducer goes into the front of that tube and uh, is mounted to the vessel. Uh, so, you know, we've been on vessels in the yachting community uh, from 60 foot Nordhavens and up. We are targeting uh, vessels from about 55 feet and larger for the Argos 350. Uh, we won't be on every 55 footer, but as you get to a little bit larger, we really are a great match for price uh, and performance. If there's a bulb on the front of the vessel, that's a great place to install the sonar. But of course, a lot of smaller vessels, uh, composite hull vessels don't have a bulb. And in those cases, it's also pretty easy to integrate the fairing onto the hull structure. It can be on the center line or even uh, off to the side of the center line. But basically, it, again, the concept's the same. There's a tube of some sort, our fairing, that's integrated, and then the transducer goes right in the front. We you know, provide installation design drawings and review services to help our customers figure out the best way to install it. Uh, most of the time, it is a fixed installation, but we do have some customers that prefer to install it on a hoist. And in those cases, if you have a sea chest already on the vessel, you can add a hoist mechanism to basically install the Argos 350 through the hull on the hoist and then retract it when you don't want to use it. This is kind of interesting for high performance sailing vessels because when you retract the sonar, you can actually have a little uh, fairing disc that will uh, make it flush with the hull lines. And so it makes it really smooth and hydrodynamic. 